Welcome guys and girls to this video. Today I'm going to show you how you can literally solve any Kubernetes issues in minutes and more. Crazy part, you do not even have to type in a single Kubernetes command or even know them. So this is not like your traditional uh, LLM fixing. Okay, super excited to do this video. I was in Seattle in Amazon headquarter this week and yesterday I had to work with a customer and they were having some challenges, you know, the crash loop back off and all that stuff. And I generally, I have my fancy monitors at home and my office, but I was literally working uh, from the Amazon cafeteria there. I tried this thing and, and it was able to solve the issues super fast. And then I flew back last night and I'm like, I have to show this to my guys and girls, okay? So as you could see, I just woke up, I still have my glasses on, I, don't, I haven't put in my contacts. So if you like this video, I'm gonna show the demo and step-by-step -step and also tell you like how this goes beyond Kubernetes. If you like this video, show this video some love, click the like button, smash it if that's something you are into, comment something so that almighty YouTube algorithm spreads it. So what are the different ways to troubleshoot Kubernetes? So before joining AWS, I handled with production Kubernetes in my previous company. So if there was a problem, and I think a lot of you folks do this, so you just Google search the errors. So in case if it is a crash loop back off, you go to Google and you search, hey, what are the errors? What are the next steps, etc. So it takes hours, right? Because you search, you copy the command, you put the command, etc., etc. And then come LLM. So LLM is a little bit better because with Google search, you get one answer, you do that thing, you go and search again, etc. With LLM, you ask LLM, hey, I'm getting crash loop back off. How should I fix it? It's gonna give you like step-by-step -step answer. LLM cannot take action. So you still have to go and take actions on those and then you might get some error, you go back to LLM and ask it, right? Because the LLM is not directly connected to your Kubernetes cluster. They are working outside. And LLM works with pre-trained data, right? It's not real time. If a new Kubernetes version came out today and you are trying it and you're getting some error, you go to LLM and ask it, we don't be able to tell because it's not trained with the latest Kubernetes version yet. In some cases, it's a little bit advanced like Kubernetes GPT. However, it's not as advanced with LLM with MCP. Okay, and I'll tell you why. So hold off a minute for that. So even with this, it takes an hour or more. Then come LLM with MCP. So MCP, think of it like a plug and play tools, right? So you can plug in any MCP tool with latest Kubernetes information and it extends beyond Kubernetes. So the same LLM model can be connected to Kubernetes, can be connected to your AWS account information, could be connected to AWS cost, could be connected to some advanced coding agent, all the same LLM. So it will have the information and context of your whole project. Okay, and this part is cool, which I'll show you. It can read the command output. So let's say LLM runs uh, kubectl. LLM can read the command output of it. If something is wrong, it can run kubectl logs. It can read the command output. It can change the YAML in the IDE. And this part, this part is super cool. I'm gonna show you as well. Uh, so let's say you are running this with Visual Studio Code. It will show that it's changing the code in the IDE. You can see the difference. You can approve it, reject it, all that stuff. It can take action with other context. What does this mean? Means that because this LLM can connect to multiple MCP tools, which could be doing different things for your project, this has the whole context, the whole information. You don't have to get out of your IDE and go look at some Terraform. You could have a Terraform or CDK MCP tool. And then you could say, the thing that I fixed how can I create a Terraform with it or create a Terraform with it? That's it, you don't have to go out. It has access to the Terraform tool or CDK tool. It will create the Terraform with your fix, right? So it's like super powerful. After it changes the YAML or fix something, it can also validate the changes real time. It takes minutes, literally. Like yesterday when I was doing it, in the Amazon office without my fancy monitors, just with my laptop, I was blown away, right? And this will be the future. Any SRE who does not learn this 
will be left behind. You cannot compete with SRE who is using this MCP tool. SRE jobs won't be eliminated. However, the SREs who are using this will take over the SREs who are just doing the traditional way and just with LLM. Uh, so this is the architecture. If you want to know more about MCP, check my MCP video along with the demo of how to set up the basic MCP. I'll give the links up top, uh, also in the description. Uh, so this is the flow. So let's say you, the user, ask fix my failing pods uh, and you ask this to a MCP host or you can think of it like an application like ChatGPT, right? ChatGPT is not just the LLM, it has some codes to it. So in this case, uh, this MCP host is where you are running these commands. So that is Visual Studio Code plus this Klein. Uh, Klein is open source uh, tool. So uh, this is the MCP client and this MCP client connects to the Kubernetes MCP server. And one misconception is these MCP servers are running outside somewhere in the internet. This MCP server is running in your laptop. If you want, you can run it outside your machine, but you don't need to, right? And running in your machine is the most secure way, but that's for another conversation or another video. And this MCP server is connected to this Kubernetes tool, which has access to all the commands and everything. So how does it connect to your Kubernetes cluster? So let's say uh, this is your uh, Kubernetes cluster, right? This is running in your Visual Studio code. So you already have kubeconfig configured. So in your Visual Studio code terminal, you can run kubectl, get pods, get nodes, get logs, etc. So this client is literally reusing that because it's running inside <coughs> integrated with your IDE. So it can access your Kubernetes cluster via CLI and IDE. Okay, now this is why it is powerful. For number one, this is not pre-trained, right? This uh, tool can be updated real time. You can plug in any other uh, MCP tools. Now, the same MCP host where you are running these troubleshooting commands can be connected to multiple tools at the same time. For example, the same MCP host can connect to AWS MCP server, which has access to AWS tools like cost, documentation, etc. So you can have access to AWS EKS best practice guides real time with the same context. So when you are sending commands to fix it, you could say, are these fixes based on EKS best practices? It can go validate it. And it can literally connect to other MCP tools like Terraform or CDK. Right? You could say, I fix this, can you codify this in Terraform? Everything happening from your Visual Studio Code IDE or other MCP host like Cursor, uh, Cloud Code, etc. You don't need to go out of anything. Okay, with that, let's jump into the demo, shall we? Okay, so this is my trusty Visual Studio Code. So for this demo, I'm using the extension Klein. If you want to know how to install Klein in Visual Studio Code, as well as set up the MCP server, please check up my other video. I don't want to uh, repeat the same information, uh, but once you have the client installed, you can click this server icon and it is going to show all the MCP tools that you are installing. And to install new tools, so in this case, Kubernetes, you can click this gear icon, you can go to marketplace, uh, type Kubernetes, okay, and then this is it. So you can go and click install here it will do all that for you. Okay, after uh, you do that, click this new task icon, and that's gonna give you the agentic chat window. On the right, I already ran this kubectl get pods, and you could see I have a couple of issues going on. One is crash loop back off, another is error image pool, image pool back off, etc. So let's fix them one by one. Okay, so in this chat, I'm going to say, my pods for Apex are failing. Can you help fix, fix this? Okay, press enter. Okay, look how cool this is. You did not have to go tell which MCP tool to use. Based on your prompt, it's intelligent enough to say that, okay, for this, I am going to use this Kubernetes MCP server. Another cool thing about this is, this is responsible AI. It shows how much is the API cost and what is the size of the context window. So whatever you do in this task, 
it's just gonna add everything to the context, right? So it has the context of everything when it takes the actions. It's not disjointed. So even if I ask it to create a Terraform, it has all this information in the context. Okay, so let's say uh, I approve this. So it's going to run this. All right, so look, it found the pod, right? It says, okay, I see the pod is failing. Uh, let's describe this. Okay, let's click approve. Let me make this a little bigger. So see, it found out. Now I can see the issue with Apex pod. Although it's phase showing as running, the container inside the pod is actually in a crash loop back of state. And then it get the error message, right? Because it's running the describe, log, everything. And how does it have access? Because it is running with my terminals cube config file, right? Uh, okay, uh, let's scroll down. So what does it want to do? It wants to describe a Kubernetes pod. Let's do this. Okay, look, it found the issue. Now I understand the issues with the both pods. The Apex pod is trying to run a non-existent command in a Ubuntu container, okay? Causing it to crash and restart repeatedly. The test pods are failing because they're trying to use an image called NGI. Wow, so it actually found the other issues as well, okay? So let's fix these issues one by one. I'll show you the YAML at this point because I had to simulate the issues. So in this case, the command is a junk command, right? So it's not valid. So basically that's why uh, it keeps doing crash loop back off. And for the other one, the image pull back off, uh, I gave a wrong image, right? I gave the image as NGI instead of Nginx. But look, it's smart enough that it found it out, right? In like, in a minute. Okay, so what does it, what will it do? For the Apex part, we need to delete it and recreated it with valid command or no command. For the test deployment, we need to update it to use the correct Nginx image instead of Nginx. So let's start by fixing the Apex pod, okay? So let's do this. Let's delete this, let's approve. All right, let's, now it's actually found out my YAML files as well. All right, click approve. Look, you see how this is changing the YAML file? So some of the other tools have only access to the CLI, but this is so powerful that it can go change it, show you the difference, right? So it's saying, okay, from non-existent command, I'm gonna delete this and change the command to sleep, right? So basically now it's not gonna do, it's a valid command. It's not gonna have crash loop back off. I'm gonna say, okay, save this. Now it should deploy it. Okay, now it's fixing the Nginx too. So it deleted the bad line of image NGI to image Nginx. So click save. Okay, so now it wants to run this. Let's give it approve. Okay, so now it's using everything in the MCP tool. It can also run the command in the terminal. Okay, so I can show, do this. Run the command in the terminal to validate. Okay, just to, just to show you. I want it to run kubectl get pod. So look at this. If I click run commands, look, it creates a terminal runs kubectl get pods, look, it's reading this terminal and it says, oh great, I get the output and it shows both the Apex pod and the test deployment pods are now running successfully. Now let's also check the details of the deployment to confirm it's using the correct image. Okay, so let's run this command. Okay, let's run kubectl describe pod Apex pod. Everything is running fine. So it fixed both these issues. And after that, I even tried with some other complex issues with, with ingress, the path-based routing, IP mode to instance mode, and it was able to do all that stuff. If you want to know more about this MCP, A2A agents related to cloud, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one.